there's an expression I really like to use when I'm teaching because it relates a lot to how people react to the ball and make decisions. Between stimulus and response lies a choice. Think about that for a moment. You done? Okay, good. Whether it be a dink that you return with a dink or a drive that you respond to by getting out of the way, either way the principle is the same. One of the main problems we have in pickleball is how often our fight or flight mechanism comes into play. Players are typically going to choose between three options when the ball is hit at them or hard near them. One, they hit the ball back hard. Two, they get hit by the ball. Or three, they leave the ball alone. Balls are attacked at a moment's notice and we've often only got a blink of an eye to react. So today we're going to look at a fourth option by introducing a drill called the fridge and the toaster. Your objective is to improve your ability to play effective block volleys and reset the point. You'll need 15 to 20 balls, a basket, a pickleball court, two paddles, two players, and some bravery. The most important element of this drill is understanding that not all attacks should be met with a counter-attack. Often, if an attack is good enough, the best course of action is to simply block that ball and live to fight another day. However, players often return fire, usually hitting from a low position, and although they may get the first attack back, they're often just delaying the inevitable. In this drill, player A assumes the role of the fridge. The fridge is tasked with cooling everything off, resetting the ball to force an opponent into a dink rally. To begin, player A, the fridge, stands at the kitchen line with the paddle up and prepared for an attack. Player B, the toaster, loves this drill because they get to bring the heat with every shot. Their role is somewhat secondary to the main objective, but they still get some great practice in creating power. To begin, this player starts at the baseline. How it works, the first progression. Player B feeds the ball in a similar fashion of a serve to player A. Player A attempts to block the ball, hitting it just over the net. Use 10 balls and see how many you can get to bounce inside the kitchen. Once you start achieving that goal with at least eight out of 10, then it's time to move on. If player A continually gets hit by the ball, then either slow down the pace of the feed until they experience success, or laugh and move on. How it works, the second progression. The toaster steps forward so that they're in the middle of the service box and repeats the attack. It'll be more difficult now for the fridge to reset inside the kitchen, so you may indeed be able to accomplish this progression while engaged in a rally. As the fridge gets accustomed to the new distance, the toaster may need to adjust the speed of their attacks to nurse the other player into success. How it works, the third progression. The toaster now steps forward to the kitchen and launches their attacks from there. This can easily turn into an attack versus defend rally, which gives both players some real practice. Again, start slow and build up the pace of attacks as the fridge gets more and more comfortable cooling things off. Added difficulty. Once both players have had a chance to play the role of the fridge, Repeat the same exercise, but now with the goal of making the ball bounce twice in the kitchen. Keys to success. Players with the continental grip will feel more comfortable using the backhand volley to execute the role of the fridge. Players with a more forehand oriented grip will need to test both strokes to see which one handles an oncoming attack the best. If it's played with the backhand, regardless of what grip you're using, be prepared to add some grip pressure to support the impact effectively. Keeping the paddle at least net height will give you a good chance to avoid having to raise the paddle to meet the ball, which often elevates the shot higher than desired. Look to create a right angle between the paddle head and the forearm to keep the wrist in a strong enough position to avoid injuries. Try not to meet the ball too far in front of the body, as the paddle will generally still be traveling to that contact point when the ball arrives. This typically overpowers the shot and can easily lead to a follow-up attack. For some people, much of this drill is going to be about desensitizing their fear of getting hit by the ball, and success can be measured by their newfound comfort level. It's a highly adaptable drill with crossover aspects that are going to help a lot of your game. Enjoy it, share it with your friends, and look out for more videos of my favorite drills. Nailed it. Epic.